pray, Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, all that you do for us. Thank you, God, for allowing us just to be in the house of God today, to be able to sing your praises and worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, I pray, God, today that you'd bless every home and every family, God, that's represented here today. And Father, I pray you'd bless the songs of Zion, stir us, and let us leave this place much differently than the way we came. And we'll love you and thank you for all that you do. In Christ's name we pray, and the people of God said, Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm glad. Uh, we are just sinners saved by the grace of God today. Amen. Listen.
you to do something real easy. Just remain seated right there where you're at. If you've been here before, stand up with us all over the building. Uh, we're going to, uh, they'll make their way through the congregation there. They're going to put a packet of information into your hand. We'd love to pray with you and uh, for you for any need that you may have. Uh, and while they're doing that, the musicians will play. We'll have a short time of fellowship.
wasn't here. But I remember when I knelt and I put all of my ability and all my strength and all of my hope in Jesus. Listen.
that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. It's His blood. Yeah.
Uh, I want to call your attention back here, and let me ask you this. Uh, 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 just, I don't want to come across rude, uh, but it, it, it is rude to get up and leave during, while someone's preaching. And so, uh, unless you have to go, uh, please don't. And uh, I'm just going to preach just for a little while, so I, would just, I want to keep your attention and I uh, want you to uh, get what the Lord has for you. Amen. Amen. All right. Last week we talked about, no, did you, did you find it ever? Yeah. All right. Praise the Lord. Bring that, just the title slide up. Uh, the Bible said there that Noah prepared an ark. Noah uh, prepared an ark. Uh, last week we talked about this, and we talked about how that uh, Noah, no doubt, uh, had got involved with things and I had been working in, in for many years. Uh, most people believe that uh, uh, for about 120 years, uh, Noah was faithful to build and faithful to work and faithful to be in preparation uh, for what God was going to do and how God was going to work. And, and so we see that there was a, a preparation uh, that had taken place and a preparation uh, that was going on. And, and uh, so I, as I begin to look at that and begin, God began to speak to me about that, I believe that every one of us uh, uh, here uh, should go all out uh, in serving God. And you say, preacher, how uh, can I do that? Well, first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to make some preparation uh, to do so. I believe there's a lot of people uh, that do not uh, follow through with God's will for their life uh, simply because uh, uh, they have no preparation to do so. Uh, they just jump into it uh, and, and they, they do not prepare themselves as days go by uh, as, as God uh, helps them along the way. Uh, there's no preparation there and, and so they fizzle out and they don't last uh, very long in this thing and I, I, I promise you this. There's going to be difficult days that you face. There'll be difficult times that you come up against. It is not always peaches and cream. Uh, you hear someone stand up and they give a testimony. Uh, sometimes you think, uh, well, if I serve God, then everything in my life will always be good. Uh, everything in my life will always be happy times uh, and good times and never any sad times. Uh, uh, but can I tell you this? The Bible said, man born of woman is a few days uh, and full of troubles. Uh, the Bible also said uh, uh, that, uh, yeah, uh, that if we serve God, uh, in, uh, if we try to follow Him, uh, if we go after Him, uh, uh, then there's going to be hard times uh, uh, that come uh, to us. Uh, and we'll go through hard seasons in our life. Uh, Paul said, endure uh, those things as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want to uh, uh, take a look at that and, and think about what God <laughs> has done in your heart and what God has done in my life uh, and what God is doing uh, in us. Uh, aren't you glad that God does not give up on us? Uh, aren't you glad that God is faithful to us? Uh, aren't you glad that God is merciful uh, to us? So I want to look a little while at uh, number two uh, on the slide there, uh, Tanya. Number two talks about the practice uh, of faith, the practice of faith. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 6, did you ever find it? All right, 02, 24, 19, it says at the very bottom, uh, on one of them, either AM or PM, it says 15 years, all right? You see it somewhere? Uh, number two, uh, you can find it in your Bible while she finds it. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 22, thus did Noah, according to all uh, that God commanded him, so did he. Chapter 7 and verse number 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. So let's talk about not only his preparation, let's talk about his practice. Let's talk about how that Noah lived before God. How that Noah lived in his generation. Uh, the Bible said that uh, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, the, uh, the Bible uh, shows us uh, that he was a person
person uh, uh, that was one that preached righteousness, uh, uh, Peter said. Uh, and, and so why uh, did he have a righteousness about him? How did he have a righteousness about him? Because he obeyed God. He done what God told him to do. Look in verse 22. The Bible said, Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. I believe a lot of times uh, uh, we're into this thing of serving God. We'll serve God uh, just for a little ways. Uh, we'll serve God just for a little while. Uh, we come to what uh, some people call the point of precedence. Uh, we, we go to uh, the place that we've been before, the place that we feel, uh, feel familiar with, uh, and we don't go any further. I believe there's a lot of people that are missing out uh, on God's blessing for you, uh, God's best for you, uh, because you, you've always done it this way. I've always acted this way. When that happens to me, I always react this way, uh, and, you, and you're still living in the same rut uh, that you've been living in, uh, because Every time something happens to you uh, and you mouth off, Lord help us Sunday morning, ain't it? Uh, you mouth off uh, and you shoot back uh, and the attitude comes out uh, and the hatred comes out uh, and the vileness comes out uh, and all that happens to you and you wonder why in the world things keep on happening to me. Yeah. Well, well. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also <laughs> We wonder... Why do these things happen to me? And the reason is, I believe many times, the reason they're happening is because we keep on doing the same thing. Amen. Amen. We're under point number two now. I see you, you finally found it there. Uh, point number two, uh, his practice speaks about uh, his practice. No one did everything uh, that God commanded him. I believe that uh, there's a lot of times uh, uh, you and I will do this. We want God to reveal and we want God to show the next step and the next area and the next uh, place that we need to be in, the next place we need to go, uh, but we're not willing to take the first step first. God will rarely uh, reveal the second step until we see the first step. Can I have somebody go get to take the rest of the teams? I don't know what, what's going on out there, uh, but be sure we got, uh, got them all in here. All right. Uh, so uh, we want to be sure uh, that we are following God. Uh, we are seeing what God is doing. Uh, we, we are uh, obeying God. We're taking a step by faith. Uh, I, I've told this story before, but I'll, I'll tell it again. I remember uh, uh, like it was yesterday. It's been many years ago now. Uh, there was a guy that came with the Rock of Ages prison ministry. And uh, he's from Rhonda. North Carolina. And the Rondo in North Carolina might not mean much to y'all. His name is Jerry Barker. Uh, well, I didn't know this, but uh, uh, Kelly's family is from Rondo. Uh, her dad's side of the family. And he's related to this guy. When he came and preached here, uh, and there, there, was, I, there was no connection that I knew of then. Uh, but uh, that's her dad's cousin. But Jerry and his wife do something very interesting. They are high wire walkers. Uh, yeah, circus act type people. <laughs> and uh, he uh, told a story about how that they got into walking on the high wire, how they got involved in that. And uh, he, he told about how that uh, he, him and his wife didn't start out just stepping out uh, 20 foot high, 40 foot high, or anything like that. No, they started out real low. They started off with a line about this high, just a little bit off the ground. And they walked on that until they were comfortable with that, until they could do it uh, with their eyes closed. And then, you know what they did? They took another step up. And they found out they could walk on that. And before long, they took another step. And they were walking higher and higher. And, you know, God has done the same thing in my life. The first step I took, the first uh, 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 baby steps I took of faith, they were just a little bit so that when I stumbled, I didn't have to be very far to fall. Oh, yes. uh, I, so when I stumbled, I could find out he's faithful. Yes. But he started letting me walk. <laughs> and he started letting me be able to, to do it a little bit. And then I took another step. And found out that God 
the same God that was the God of the first run. He's the God of the second run. He's the God up here. And even though we want to see the next step, you'll never get to the next step until you take the step, first step by faith. And we'll do that. And you'll do that by obeying God. So, let's talk about that being obedient to the Lord. We follow the Lord sin usually just as far as we've been before, but no further. We leave unclaimed the gift of God. We leave unclaimed the anointing of God, the dreams that God has for us, the things that God wants to give us. Uh, we, we never lay hold of those things because we're still stuck down here on the first step. We can't get past the first step. Some of you are going to be following the Lord in baptism next week. And I say thank God for it because that's one of the first steps you ought to take in following God. Uh, Jesus was baptized uh, to, to show us and give us an example. Uh, we, we follow along in steps of faith. And I've learned this, Miss Fred, in my life. That every step of faith, God is going to lead me to, but he won't make me take it. He'll lead me to it. And there's times, I'll just be honest, that I don't take the step when I should. And you know what happens in my life? I never get up here because I'm stuck down here. Some people, the reason they never get past certain sins in their life, certain areas in their life, there's always these, these problems that, they, uh, that always uh, follow along in them, is because they're stuck and they're hung up down here. Uh, they can't get past down here. Y'all don't even want to hear what I'm going to say this morning. Yeah. Today. <laughs> now you say, preacher, how does that affect my life? How does that apply to me? You and I have got to learn to position ourselves for favor by acting in obedience. If you want the favor of God on your life, if you want the favor of God in your job, if you want the favor of God in your family, if you want the favor of God on your finances, you've got to act in obedience. I believe with all my heart that God wants to favor you. God wants to show and shower down blessings on you. God wants to move in your family. God wants to move in this church. God wants to do great things. But we'll never get there. We won't see it happening until we finally obey God and do what God has told us to do. I, uh, I don't want to come across as judgmental here, but I just just call it observant. I've been saved now since 1989, so that makes 30 years this year. And I've been involved in different churches, not just this church, but different churches over my life. I've known a lot of people. Uh, now I've been pastoring for 15 years, and I've been pretty well involved in many people's lives. And there's some people that seem like they just go through circles in their life. Amen. Just get spinning. You can't ever get out of the rut. How many of y'all would like to get be in the rut? Some of you do, all right. <laughs> but some people, they'll come to me and say, Preacher, I don't understand. We're trying to serve God. It seems like our our bills never can, they, they just don't ever have enough. And this, this may come across as crass to you, but one of the first questions that has to be asked in a situation like that, are you tithing? Yeah. Are you putting God first in your life in your area of tithing? And then we'll go from there. We'll talk about uh, other things. Sometimes people say, you know, <laughs> y'all, yeah. preacher, I don't know why in the world drama falls and follows me around. I just don't know why in the world it seems like I'm always in drama. And I'm sitting across the desk looking at him thinking, because you are drama. Right. Because you involved. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thought it was going to play music. 
We, we sit and complain about the seed that we're sowing. When it starts growing, we sit and look at it and say, why is that happening in my life? Well, the truth is, is because we weren't obedient. We were disobedient back there. We sowed, we sowed, we sowed, and now what's happening? It's coming up. I'm talking about Noah was obedient. He'd done everything that God told him to do. I, I mean, it, he, he went down to the very inch uh, of how big that ark was supposed to be. He did everything just like he was supposed to do it uh, because God had told him to do it. I wonder, I wonder if we got a, a bunch of people in this room. I wonder if we got a bunch of people around this church that would just make up our mind. I won't do it the way God told me to do it. I know I don't, might not always understand it. I might not always agree with everything about it, but I'm just going to go ahead and obey God and I'm going to be good to God and I'm going to follow God and I'm going to do everything he wants me to do. I wonder how many people I would start to see favor flowing in our life. I wonder how many people would start to see the blessings of God raining down on us. If we just made up our mind, I'm going all the way. I'll do everything you told me to do, Lord. The, uh, we We go through seasons and we go through times where things happen in our lives and we get sideways. Y'all never been sideways, have you? Sometimes you get sideways, just messed up, caught up, bought in bondage of the enemy. Sometimes, I think, I think maybe a lot of times we get sideways with people. We get sideways with situations. We get sideways with what's going on around us. You know, Carolyn, I don't know how you look at me. I don't know what you think about me. I, I think you love me. I'm pretty sure you do. But, uh, you know, I, I Miss Brown, I, I think of myself kind of like a big teddy bear, usually. Sometimes I'm like, my, my, <laughs> Clay's got this little animal that it, it, it's sweet and everything, then you squeeze it and his teeth are out. <laughs> Sometimes I think maybe I got a little bit of that in me. But, uh, you know, there are people that are sitting here today, and you're involved in the ministries you're in, you're involved in the things you're in, because this church, and I would say behind my leadership, this church is a church that forgives. This is the church that shows mercy. This is the church that shows grace. Amen. This is the church that tries to bring people on. And then there are people that enjoy that, take part of that, have experienced that. But when mercy is shown, when grace is given to somebody they don't like, they don't like it. They'll run me down. They'll run this church down. They'll run everything about, about us down because they shouldn't have ever let such and such do this. Do you want to put up on the screen everything you did? That's right. All the messages I got? That's right. All the emails I got? Amen. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's yeah. Right. I didn't think we were going to talk about that. <laughs> Noah had a practice of obeying God. I think that you and I, if we want to see the grace of God in our life, we want to see God's blessings on our life, uh, we want to see God uh, do something real in our life, we're going to have to obey Him. Amen. We're going to have to do what He's told us to do. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, get, I'll tell you this. There was a, uh, praise the Lord, we all right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let y'all know something. All right. We just had one to save the children's church. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. That's all right. You can interrupt me for that. <laughs> there, uh, there's a, an animal called an African impala. And uh, it can jump, Wade. It can jump 10 feet high, 30 foot spans. But they, they keep it in a zoo. And they do so easily, Brother Ronnie. 
And the reason that, the, and what all they do to keep it in, in its confinement, in its containment, is they've got a three foot wall. Now remember, this thing can jump 10 foot high, 30 foot spans. And it is kept in a cage by a 10 foot wall. The reason being is an African impala will never jump where it cannot see where it's going to land. And it will, it'll stay stuck in there its whole life, even though any day it can jump out. I think a lot of us are stuck in our confinement. We're stuck in our cage because if we're going to get out, we're going to have to take a leap of faith. If we're going to get out, we're not going to be able to see where we're going. But we're going to have to know that God is calling us uh, uh, to get out uh, and to go on. And I believe uh, that Noah uh, just made up his mind. God, if that's what you want, if that's what you're telling me to do, uh, then I'm going to do it. I don't care if that I was raised like this. I don't care that I've always done it this way. I don't care if it's always been that way in my family. I'm going to make up my mind. I'm breaking the generational curse. I'm going to bring blessing. What if Noah didn't? Noah, him and his family, is what God used and who's God used to restart this whole thing. He started with Adam and Eve and killed everybody except for Noah and his family. What if Noah wouldn't have answered? What if Noah wouldn't have obeyed? It could be that God uses you. It could be that God uses your family to bring blessing to untold millions ahead. Right. Will you obey God today? Here's the last one. I'll make it quick. Notice his preparation, his practice. Here's the last one. Notice his persistence. Verse uh, Genesis 7 and verse number 5 said, And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. You'll skip down several verses there to verse number 16. The Bible said, And they went in, and went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. And notice this, you ought to underline this in your Bible, and the Lord shut him in. And the Lord shut him in. I, I, I want to just pause before I get too far into this thing. Aren't you glad that it's not up to you to keep you? Aren't you glad that it's up to God to keep us? And the Bible said that Noah and the family and all the animals and everything, they made it safely where they were going over a year later when they finally got off the ark. They did so because God shut the door and God kept them from drowning and God kept them from going under. Hey, I'm glad to tell you one of these good glad days when you read in the Bible, in the newspaper that I have died. Don't you believe in a word of it? Don't you believe any of that? Yes. Because I'm more alive then than I ever have been. And when I get over yonder, it won't be because I did anything. It'll be all because he got me there. His persistence. Noah did according to all that the Lord had commanded him. Think about life on the ark just for a minute. For a year, he stuck in there with how many of y'all take family vacations every once in a while? Anybody do that? Big family? Small house? Lots of attitude? Amen. He had eight, eight of them that were in, in that ark. Then they had all these animals. Can you imagine the smell? They say that a, a, an elephant, Brother Ronnie, can make 80 pounds of waste every day. Stinky and smelly and dirty. But you know, I, I believe that's probably what obedience sometimes is like. Sometimes it's hard work and it just, just gets harder. Sometimes obeying God is not the easy thing to do. Reacting how you want to react and reacting how God would have you to react 
are not the, not always the same thing. I read something one time before, and it said something like this. We can train ourselves how to act, but not how to react. Think about the, uh, uh, whenever the woman came in there with the alabaster box, uh, how the, the disciples acted toward her or reacted whenever she came in. They did not expect this dirty lady to come in. And I, I, I suppose Judas said it just as well as the rest of them was thinking it. What is this waste? We could have taken this and done something else with it. He reacted to what she was doing because it was down in his heart uh, that this woman ought not be here. And uh, all the while, Judas is the one playing the part. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? Judas is the one putting the act on. Judas is the one putting the show on. He's looking at somebody else saying, what is she doing? She ought not be here. Uh, she ought not be uh, going through what she's going through. The Lord ought, ought to know better than that. Uh, he ought to know who she is. Uh, and God, hallelujah, I'm glad that Jesus knew uh, just exactly who she was. Uh, and he received it anyway. Uh, because Jesus knows uh, exactly who you are uh, and exactly who I am. Uh, and he receives uh, our praise anyway. And we pour out our worship on him. He receives it even though we're dirty mess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this persistence. Noah did, according to the Lord, uh, had commanded him. Obedience is hard work and it many times gets harder. Obedience brings the blessings of God. The blessings of God often complicate our lives. In September of 2001, my life got a little bit more complicated. I married somebody, thank God. And then, as the years have come on, in 2007, 2009, 2012, my life got more complicated with the Clara Grace, the Clay, and the Katie. Thank God. I'm thankful. That even in the complications of life, when it gets harder, it's still worth it. Sometimes it's not always going to be the easy thing to follow God and to obey God. But can I tell you this? It's going to be worth it in the end. It'll be worth listening to Him. It'll be worth obeying Him. It'll be worth following Him. I can tell you, no matter what dream you're dreaming right now, no matter what vision you think that God has given you now, it'll probably be longer. I take longer and it'll probably be harder than you can imagine right now. Uh, but I, I, I can also say uh, uh, that we often underestimate uh, uh, what we can go through uh, and what can happen in a year. Uh, but we underestimate uh, uh, what God can do in a decade, uh, what God can do in 120 years. Uh, uh, can you imagine Noah as he's taking some seed uh, and he's throwing them out there and he dug, just dug up and tilled the ground and he's just sitting back waiting. For the first year, those saplings didn't come up very well and he thought, Lord... I don't know how in the world this is going to happen. But add on decades and decades and decades, those trees grew high, those trees grew tall, those trees grew strong, and he was able to cut them down and start building what God had already told him to do. Can I say this? What you can get and start again right now, the Bible says, despise not the day of small things. Yes. Despise not the day of small beginnings. Uh, there are times in our life uh, that we look at something and we're willing to walk away and we're willing to give up because it didn't come right away. We live in a microwave generation. We live in a cell phone, phone uh, society. Uh, we live in a right now, I've got to have it. Uh, we should have had it five minutes ago. Some of y'all know y'all come from, low, uh, some, from slow cooker mentalities. Amen. Some of y'all know something about putting it on. My wife made roast and hallelujahs. It's probably right by now. Last night, I kept waking up and smelling. <laughs> y'all know, y'all know that, that roast has been cooking all night. And uh, I knew I couldn't eat it in the middle of the night. It ain't ready yet. But man, it was starting to smell right. I, but it had to, had to seep. It had to, had to cook a little while. And when we get home here in a little while, uh, Brother Glenn, praise God, I'm gonna, I, I, if, if she'll let me have one, I'm going to give me one of them flaky biscuits. And I'm going to dip it. Ah, <laughs> well, boy. Yes, sir, you're right. Maybe she'll, maybe she'll make some of, some of Dad's rice 
with the cream in it, the butter in it, and oh yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> the Lord just spoke right there. Amen. <laughs> but we live in a time frame that we think we've got to have. It's got to happen right now. And sometimes God has got something bigger planned. I wrote this down and I didn't want to forget. I think that, tell you, you know, come on to me here. The, uh, I think something that can speak to your heart, speaks to my heart, is this. Going all out for God is not just about getting where God wants you to go. I mean, we want to get there. But going all out for God, I believe, is just as much about who you and who I become in the process of getting there. God is much as much concerned about building you as he is about you getting to where you're supposed to get. It's not about how quickly we get there. But it's about how far we go with God. Listen to this verse that Paul said at the end of his life. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. At the end of your life, God's not going to ask you how much money you got in the bank. How many cars you got? How many houses you got? I don't even think God's going to ask you how many verses did you memorize? He's not going to ask you how many Sunday school pins you got on your lapel. He's going to ask you, did you do what I told you to do? The Bible said this, that those that have, that will be greeted like this, well done, thou good and faithful. Successful. I'd imagine most of us to look back on our life and think, you know, I'd have fallen. I'd been better here. I thought things were better there. I thought I'd saw more success in this area. But I didn't. Don't beat yourself up, but ask yourself this question Have I done what God told me? Because when you stand before him, when I stand before him, I want you to stand all over this room this morning. How many of us would, would say, God, I want to be faithful. And she's waiting. I wonder how many of us would slip out and come around this altar and say, God, Lord, I want to thank you for the things you've done in my heart. And thank you for the things you've done in my life. God, you've been better to me than I've ever deserved. And I want to tell you, I love you and I thank you. Lord, I, I want to be faithful. Church, how many of us have come and found it, find a place around this altar and say, God, I want to be what you want me to be. I want to obey you. God, I want to, in every situation, in every circumstance, God, I want to do what you told me to do. Help me, God, to obey. God, I want the blessings on my life. I realize I need to obey. I need to follow you. I need to do what you called me to do. Somebody is waiting on me to start building the ark. Somebody's waiting on me to start planting. Somebody's waiting for me to start tilling. God, help me to do my part. Heads bowed and eyes closed, many are praying. You're here this morning and say, Preacher, Preacher, I need to be closer to God than I am right now. Preacher, I need the help of God in my life. With heads bowed and eyes closed, how many of us slip our hand up and right back down? Preacher, would you help me pray? We see those, we see those, we see those. Preacher, I need God's help and I need God's hand on my life. Here's my hand to God. Lord, Hear my prayer. Is there anybody else? You're here this morning and say, Preacher, I'm not ready to meet God like I am. There's a lot of things in my life that I know are not right. And I need God's help. 
Maybe you'd be another like that one over next door this morning that God would reach down and save you. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I wonder if you'd just be honest enough to say this. Preacher, I'm not 100% sure that I'm ready to meet God like I am. What if you just slip your hand up and write that down? Preacher, would you pray for me? I'm going to come to you, call you out, and maybe embarrass you in any kind of way. And I sure will pray for you. Is anybody like that? Preacher, I'm not 100% sure that I'm ready to meet God like I am this morning. Please pray for me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for what you've done in our hearts, what you've done in our life. I ask you that, Lord, you'd help us. God, you'd speak to us. God, you'd be with us, Lord, as we try to serve you. Oh, God, I want to be one that's found faithful. I want to do what you've told me to do. God, I want to keep on like Paul. I want to look back on my life and say, I have finished my course. I've done everything you told me to do. God, help me. Help us that we would not be an also ran, that we would not be a used to, a has been. But God, help us to make up our mind that we're going all out for you. Thank you, Lord, for helping us today. Thank you for your word. I pray, God, that you'd speak to us through it. God, give us everything that we need in these hours. I love you. I bless you. Have your will and have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, let me uh, say I appreciate you being here. Um, thank you for coming out today. We're going to uh, add a couple of announcements that we need, we need to make here. And, um, okay, there it is. Um, the teens, are, uh, who are the teens that are helping with the change offering? Y'all go ahead and make your way back there. Uh, they'll have that available for you. And, uh, those of you that have been helping with our team change offering, we're at $309, and we're praying for the Lord for that. And uh, we, we want you to be sure uh, if you have that and you want to be able to give, they're going to be out in the foyer, out in that area, uh, so you can do that here in just a moment. Let's uh, um, also uh, make me sure, ushers, you, you all can go ahead and come. Uh, our ushers, if you want to go ahead and come, ushers, 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 praise the Lord, wake up, Joe, wake up, amen, there he is, uh, all right, <clears throat> we appreciate that, uh, we're going to take this opportunity to worship the Lord in giving, uh, while they're doing that, we'll make a couple of announcements, if you are going to be baptized, uh, some of you have talked to me about it, some of you are praying about it, uh, if you, if you want to know more about it, I want you to meet me in the men's uh, prayer room in the men's Sunday school class. Just go down the hallway, and it's the second door past uh, the men's restroom, uh, second door down there. Uh, meet me down in the men's class, and we'll, I've got some information I want to give you. And so next Sunday night, we're going to have baptism. We want you to invite your friends and family, uh, people that would uh, be able to rejoice with you. Uh, so that's next Sunday night. Uh, also next uh, Sunday, uh, Sunday afternoon, we're going to have choir practice, and uh, we're going to be getting some new songs and kickstarting some things. Uh, let me say this, and I, uh, my Lord help y'all think I'm mad at you anyway, so I'll just go ahead and be honest. Um, we, uh, I appreciate all the teens up in the choir. Man, that's a blessing to see. But we ought to have more adults in the choir than we do teenagers. Amen. Yeah. The the adults need to be leading worship, not teenagers. Amen. All right? They have to follow us. I'm glad for the times that are involved and all that. So let me encourage you. Let me uh, edify you. Uh, if you've got a, a, a song in your heart, uh, come and be, be involved in choir. We'll be doing that next Sunday uh, at 5 o'clock. We'll have choir practice. And then uh, the ladies' fellowship will be on the 12th. Uh, so I think that's a 
Taco Tuesday uh, Lady Fellowship kind of thing. So keep that in mind, all right? Um, I know, praise the Lord, it's supposed to rain tonight, and we'll be back here at 6 o'clock. And if you love Jesus, you'll come back too, right? Amen. <laughs> all right. Uh, come on back tonight. Uh, fellas, make your way, and uh, uh, you have an opportunity to, to worship the Lord in giving. You can do that here. If you can't, uh, you're not prepared to do that today, uh, you can certainly go to our website. You can give online. You can use the app. Uh, and you can give right from your mobile phone and all that. And we do appreciate the weird faithfulness in giving. And we look forward to what the Lord's going to do. All right, come back. Be with us tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. One thing. Next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, we did this last year, and I was surprised. I didn't think it would work. It worked well last year, so I, I, I'm rolling the dice on it this year. At 10 o'clock, we're going to have a fellowship. Now, next Sunday, you might know what next Sunday is? Spring forward. Spring forward, all right? And not fall back. It's spring forward. And so that means it'll be about 9 o'clock tummy time, okay? So you might be hungry. So we're going to eat over the fellowship hall. I need... Uh, if I need for you to help us bring bring a breakfast dish of casserole, uh, bacon, sausage, things like that, you can get my, with my wife. She'll have a list on, on all that. Uh, but we'll be here at 10 o'clock, and I'm going to make an announcement next uh, during that 10 o'clock hour about what we're going to be doing for the next little while uh, over the next few weeks, uh, doing an, an attendance push and drive. And so uh, that's uh, on 10 o'clock next Sunday morning. Be here for that. All right? Let's have a word of prayer. Uh, Brother Glenn, you pray for us. The Lord, thank you today. Thank you, God, for that message. Lord, I pray, God, for everyone here today. Dear Lord, be with us, Lord, to go to our homes. Keep us safe and in your care, dear Lord. We thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us. I pray, God, in Jesus' wonderful, precious, holy name. Amen.